it took me years to understand that I uh, have been channeling information. So at first, years and years and years and years ago, there was no information about it. I didn't understand what was actually happening. But I would get this urgency inside to speak about something. And I wasn't brought up to be much of a speaker, like I was more of a listener. But there was this deep urgency, like I would see something, I would hear somebody's words, something would happen, I would, I would, I would visualize something in the future. And I would get this urgency inside to speak it out. Now, let me tell you, quite honestly, not a, a lot of people liked it. Not a lot of people enjoyed hearing what I had to say. And so I was more in the silent zone. So I would keep it to myself unless someone was really needing to hear something and I would know it and I would feel it. And then I would force myself to say it and cringe in anticipation of their wrath or their anger or their like disappointment in me. But as the years progressed and in time, like a few years ago when I started to discover, oh, there's this thing called channeling. And I started to think like, okay, um, it's supposed, I'm supposed to sound like Abraham Hicks. Like I should be talking with a different voice and a different tone. So no, I'm not channeling or like Bashad or like any of the channelers, right? They, they tend to change their voice or talk from a different space. And I was like, then I'm not channeling. Then what is it that I'm doing? Why do I get this information and this urgency to get this information out to a specific person I'm talking to or to the collective? It's like an urgency. Anyway, in time, I discovered that the way I channel, because then I started to like want to put myself in a category or in a box of some kind. And let me just sit more comfortably. I like to sit cross-legged and I like to take a pillow and kind of hug it. Um, so... What it turns out was that the kind of channeling I do is, is, is very specific in a sense of I need to hear the person speaking and I'm able to guide them to the truth of who they are. I end up seeing the truth of who they are. I see this amazing being and I see where they're at. This is what I'm seeing or I'm feeling or I'm hearing I, all my senses. I'm like a seer. So I get to, I, all, all of them, the clairsentience, the clairaudience, the clair, claircognizant, and the, the, um, all of them. I use them. So, and they, they come in different times. So I'm not attached to any specific one of them. It just depends which one I'm ready to work with in that day according to what my mood is or what state of mind I'm in. So what happens is when you're asking your question, when you speak, when you're just talking to me, I will hear another version of you saying, this is the version of me that this person is. This is the truth of who they are. This is this, the, the program that's speaking. This isn't their truth. So I could hear the ego and I can hear the spiritual self, let's say. I can hear the 3D version of you and the 5D version of you. And what my specialty is bridging the two is allowing you to cross from here to there, from going from your 3D egoic programmed um, conditioned space into your freedom and your self-awareness, right? So it comes in many ways. It comes through the words that you speak and I can hear it and I can see you. And I can also know if you're open to receiving it or not. And I think I developed that after the traumas of so many people being like, oh, yeah, the, your opinion and your opinions. Like, this isn't my opinion. This is information that's coming. And I remember very clearly I would sometimes just have to write this huge email to someone because I'm not allowed to go to sleep. I'm not allowed to move. Like, anywhere I go, this information is just hounding me. So I end up getting on the email or getting on WhatsApp or getting on message or messenger or whatever it is to that person specifically. And I just start typing, 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 typing. And at the end, I always write, take it or leave it, throw it in the garbage. All I know is this is meant for you. And I'm supposed to share it with you so that I can rest. And that's how the information would go out. In time, as I became more confident in it, and I understood it, and I kind of embraced it and trusted it a lot more and, and was less afraid of people's reactions towards it and found my, my self-assurance within it, um, I started to share, share randomly 
and still put that, throw it in the garbage if you don't like it. And when friends would call, uh, I would need them to ask me specifically, is there something that I need to know? Or please help me or please say this. But just on my own, I will not give that information. I will not give it just because it doesn't feel safe for me to offer the information to people who are not seeking to realize it. Maybe they're just miserable people who like to complain. These people I can sense a mile away, so I don't even put in the effort. And honestly, I don't receive any challenging for them. And I sometimes do, and I sometimes hold it in. I say, nope, not going to do it. So that was a phone call. Anyway, so what I'm trying to explain is that I do channel information. And you don't have to necessarily channel information like how everybody channels information. I, I channel information, and I still sound like me. I still sound like me, but I've... I've come to understand that a lot of clients that I've had and friends have noticed and work and when in workshops and when I meet those people outside of workshops, they tell me the difference. They say, I sound a little more stricter and more confident and I'm not like sugarcoating anything. I'm just saying it as it is and it's coming out and it feels that way to me. It feels like I can't sugarcoat it. I have to speak it. I have to speak truth. One second. I'm back. So I can't sugarcoat it and I can't make it sound any different than what is meant to be heard by that person. And it's usually a lot tougher and straight to the point. Uh, so I started to notice how it actually comes out and I'm unapologetic about it. The person likes it, they like it. If they don't, they don't. It's up to them. I know it always, it always, be, it, it's, it's the truth that's coming out. So I also tried to figure out like, oh, why don't I have a name? Like, who is this person? Who are the entities speaking to me? Da, 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 at time. And I kept trying to be like, oh, and I'd like think of a name. I'd be like, is that the name? Is that the name? And then in time, what I started to understand is the information I receive is directly from divinity itself. It's directly from source. It's such a loving, kind information. Like even if I'm presenting it with, with strength, because it's strength, it's not harshness. It's such loving, and it's very much according to either the collective that I'm speaking to, if it's a group workshop or a group meditation, or it's individual, and it shifts according to that person. So it's given in the nicest form, but in a very straightforward form, right? My, me as Rain, I'm kind of like a sugar-coated kind of personality. But when I'm channeling, I'm not sugarcoating personality. I hear the thing. I hear like a, it's like a, it's like a, something really loud happens inside. And I can hear like, oh, this person's using this word, but this word doesn't work for them or they find it bad or there's a program there. It's not truth. I can hear the not truth, but I can also hear the truth. And I can easily guide them from the not truth to the truth where they go, oh. So I work a lot with the light. And I head towards the light and I don't go into the darkness to bring people into the light. That's not how I function. That's not how divinity works through me and how I channel. I channel from the space of 4D. I channel from 5D. I channel from another realm of reality where it is consistently of the light, but it's not going into the darkness. It's not going into your shadow and your limiting beliefs in the sense of, yes, we will discover them, but they're not shadow and darkness. They're actually light. So that's why I have my book, Discover the Gifts Within Your Disempowered Self. And that book was written within three weeks. And it's a very big book with pictures and images. And that was channeled through me. You have no idea how euphoric it was to write it and to have it. You can find it on Amazon. I'll put it on the link at the bottom so you can get a hold of it. But that book is all about the light. Discover the gifts of your disempowered self. Disempowered self is your shadow, what people are calling your shadow self, is a disempowered self. It is not a shadow. But there are gifts within what we have deemed to be wrong or bad. And so I really um, encourage you to go check out that book and, and get it and own it, right? And have fun with it because it's channeled, right? It's just come through me, which is amazing. So this is how my channeling, my channeling works. That's why it works on individuals. And then uh, about a year ago, I started to discover that I also channel through meditations, guided, guided healing meditations. I was asked, I was told that they're called guided healing meditations, meaning a collection of people, 
a collective amount, whatever amount of people are sitting there, I close my eyes and I start to channel a meditation, just a simple meditation. And so many codes are changing and so many things are, are transforming for those people. And if I have five or six people only in, in the group, I will sometimes end up receiving specifically for each and every individual, I'll be seeing things for each individual in the room for them and I'll guide them in that meditation to do something specific. Like last, one, one of the times I got somebody's um, son who passed away and I got somebody else's brick walls that was all around her that she couldn't see and, and, and through the meditation as they were doing their part, I was talking to her to do this and I was jumping from one person to the next as I was channeling and meditating. So these guided meditations are incredibly amazing. Even so I record them and I put them on YouTube because I know it's for the collective. I heard to put them on YouTube. So my channeling abilities are not unlike any other that I've come across because I don't change my tone of voice. I don't speak any differently than who I actually am. It's just the, 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 the strength of it comes out and it's unapologetic. So channeling is beautiful. There's no specific way to do it. There's no specific, like you can't follow anyone else. You can't get a name and be like, well, I want the name of this thing. Sometimes there isn't a specific name or there aren't specific beings. Like there are times with my clients, if they have somebody who's passed, I'll feel teary and choked and I'll be a medium because I used to also do mediumship and I would see dead people. So but that's not the thing that I'm interested in. I'm interested in higher realms of knowledge. As a Sagittarius and a reflector, that's where my that's where I soar the most. And so it's according to where my heart lies and what I like to receive and what, what kind of information I want to receive. And the information I want to receive is all about freedom. Freedom of self, freedom of life, freedom to feel what one wants to feel. That is what I channel. That is where I take everybody that comes to me for private sessions or to my workshops or to my meditations. They are free to actually be more of who they are by not deleting, reprimanding, putting down any aspect of themselves, even if it's deemed by society or by their thoughts bad, it becomes their gift. That's what I channel. That's what I present you with. This is my offering to everyone and anyone who comes across my path. So when I also feel that people, I start to choke up and want to cry. And that's when I receive a message for a specific client. So I'm able to get in touch with a lot of different dimensions of realities. All I have to do is open myself up to whoever it is that is in front of me. And then I start to receive the information. If it's at a collective, because it's a group of people, you will receive that information. I do the same thing on the podcast with uh, Expand with Mel and Rain that I partnered up with Mel, this beautiful woman, and I channel the information there. I debunk lots of things. I reprogram. I give permissions. I shift things. And this is all what I keep receiving from divinity for the well-being of our planet. So it's working only through the light and nothing else. You'll also notice on my channel, you'll have those guided meditations to go through and try them out for yourself. You're also going to notice there's one, only one so far, that is a subliminal. And it's clean and clear and coherent and everything I believe that you may need to hear subconsciously in your mind to reprogram yourself to a better state and a better space within you right? So life is, should be effortless. Healing is effortless. The biggest effort is just shifting the language within. I can help you with that with ease. This is what I do. I'm Rain Zabin. If you like this episode, if you enjoyed hearing what you're hearing, go to the descriptions, go to the other links, go to buy me a coffee, go to my Instagram, uh, get on my website, do whatever it is to get in touch and connect with me. Leave your comments at the bottom. Share what you need to share. Ask your questions. I promise you I will answer them. And the answers that will come to you will be from higher consciousness, will be from divinity, will be from another frequency that you have not been able to tap into. I will offer you the answers from a different realm and reality. And it's up to you to take it or leave it. It's your choice. It's free will. Also, if you really like this episode, please press thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. Um, it really means a lot to me. It really will help in everything for my channel to grow, 
that I can offer you more of these insights. And I will also leave the link at the bottom so you can go watch Expand with Mel and Rain where you're really going to learn so much and you're going to expand so much because we are expanding into the light, my loves. All right. Take care of yourselves and I will see you when I see you. Bye.